you know, maybe, maybe the golden nugget is just to literally count up how many systems you have that contribute to your financial results. Mm -hmm. The sheer number should bother you. And, well, and, and ask yourself, <clears throat> how long does it take you to close your books? Yeah. If it takes 15 days, 10 or 15, that's what it usually is. What that means is the, the, as soon as you get a report, you're looking at information that is anywhere from 15 to 45 days old. It's what happened the previous month. Hey, everybody, and welcome back. It is yet another week with Leaders Talk, and the most exciting week uh, time of your week ever. <laughs> I am Andrew Dupey, your Chief Relationship Officer here at Leaders Press, as always. And today, I am very happy to be joined by Dave McComb. Now, let me take a second to introduce Dave to you. Dave is the president and the co-founder of Semantic Arts. He and his team help organizations uncover the meeting of data from their information systems. Uh, Dave is also the author of The Data-Centric Revolution, uh, Software Wasteland, and Semantics in Business Systems. Uh, for over 20 years, Semantic Arts has helped firms of all sizes in this endeavor, including Procter & Gamble, Goldman Sachs, Schneider Electric, LexisNexis, Dun & Bradstreet, and Morgan & Stanley. Uh, prior to Semantic Arts, Dave uh, co-founded Velocity Healthcare, where he helped to develop and patented the first fully model-driven uh, architecture. Prior to that, uh, he was just part of the problem. <laughs> so, Dave, that's an interesting bio, um, and we know you have another book to talk about with us today, but let's just kind of start from there. Uh, share with us a little bit about yourself and your journey with our audience. Great. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, as I said, I... Once upon a time, I was part of the problem. I was building yeah. application systems um, for a large systems integration firm. I thought I was pretty good at it. And then one day I just woke up and realized what we were all doing. We're all mm -hmm. just building more data silos. And then we spend all of our time trying to reconcile them back together. And we just thought there must be a, a principled way to not do that. <clears throat> and that eventually led us to the study of semantics, you know, the study of meaning, because what was actually happening in all those systems is people would interview people and they would hear something. And they'd just draw a bunch of tables and boxes and arrows and stuff <laughs> and put whatever words on them that the last person they talked to said, and that became a system. And then you filled it up with data and then you started integrating again. So semantics says, no, what if you actually got very deep about what things mean? Mm -hmm. and just implemented that, it would be fairly constant from area to area, domain to domain. So, you know, that's what we started doing in 2000. Um, and that's what led us to here. Well, what does, I mean, what does really, let's, let's delve a little bit into what the problem is uh, that you're offering a solution for. So what is a little bit of a deep dive of what that problem is and how is semantics the proper solution to that problem right so if if <clears throat> if you're a large company like some of the ones you just mentioned in my right, intro yeah. you have somewhere between thousands and maybe ten thousand different computer application systems you have dozens of inventory systems and hr systems and all kinds of miscellaneous yeah, exactly. odd, yep that and every single one of them has a different data model every single one of them has different words they use on the screen and words they use in the database and different structures, different abstraction. Everything is arbitrarily different. And so firms spend most of their IT budget trying to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Yeah. You know, this, this thing, you know, if you, and, and, and these are not simple, you know, any one application often has a thousand concepts, you know, a thousand table headings, if you will, or a thousand fields or a thousand elements, whatever you want to say. And if you have a thousand of them, you have a million things to learn in order to understand the information that your enterprise manages. But what we've discovered, if you start by trying to understand, you know, what, what business is your business really in? What is, what is all that stuff that you're storing mean? There's only about a thousand concepts. 
And if you know what those are, then you can map everything. You, could, you can just query those thousand and find out everything in your enterprise. And when we shone that light on accounting, you know, so like I was saying early in my career, I built accounting systems. Right, yeah. In the middle part of my career, and the more recently, I've been built, we've been helping people with this data-centric journey, but we haven't touched their accounting systems. But all of a sudden now we finally said, oh, it's time to look at those accounting systems. And it turns out the accounting systems have all the same problems that everything else does. Incredible complexity, delay, you know, time to close the books, lots of people in the loop, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, that's what we're dealing with now. Yeah. Well, don't you feel that that's kind of how some companies have grown organically in this new environment? I mean, I can tell you from a position of an executive in a startup myself um, that we've experimented with multiple different ways in which we either CRMs or accounting software or, yeah. or you know, all kinds of different things. And, and at the end of the day, we settled into processes, but it took us years to get there in it kind of became a little bit of a Frankenstein's monster <laughs> of, Absolutely. Of, of things being in, in different places and us having staff that, you know, maybe should be or, allocated to, to different areas. And, and that's because we grew organically and we grew a lot through trial yep. and error. Do you feel that in business, that's where you kind of start to get into the problem? It's almost like the jumble of the cable. Yeah. And the lights? Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we should know better. We have, 20 systems to manage our 30 people. And you go, mm -hmm. that's, that's ridiculous. You know, a year from now, we will not have 20 systems. I can guarantee you we're getting rid of our yeah. accounting system or CRM mm -hmm. and all this stuff. It's going to collapse into the one data centric platform. But, but for now we do. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a challenge then for somebody that is a startup um, that has a lot of potential, that has enormous growth. I mean, again, our company could be a really good example of that. I mean, we've had, at this point, 100% growth almost every year for the last three years. Um, yeah. How do you, as, a, let's say, a CEO like ours, Olinka, um, how do mm -hmm. you take a top-down view of your company and kind of plan ahead <laughs> to avoid... The, the pitfalls of, right. of getting yourself kind of underwater. Yeah. I, I used to belong to the CEO group locally and, you know, people would get together just to, you know, share the kinds of common problems that CEOs have. And I used to always try and explain to them what it was we did. Yeah. And finally, one of them, they finally sort of started to figure it out. They said, oh, you untangle all those hairballs that, that giant companies have created. <laughs> And I said, yeah. And he said, well, what we need is a hairball prevention service. Exactly. Yeah. How do we prevent hairballs? <clears throat> um, and, you know, we haven't concentrated as much, you know, as you, as you can sort of tell from my bio, we've mostly concentrated on fairly large companies. We're now moving kind of into the mid market. Um, and that's, it's just kind of the evolution of this thing. It was originally almost completely professional services. Now we're moving into a mix of kind of a platform solution with a little bit of professional services. And eventually, you know, we, we think, and one of the reasons for writing the book is I think people, people can just read the book and some entrepreneurs will implement that and just have it as an offering mm. in probably some vertical industry and say, this is how you manage your, Assist your your company as a data centric company, including accounting, and and for a small business, you know accounting is is probably a third of all your systems. Right. You know that's a it's a key piece. Yeah, and but it, it, and just like you say though, even in small businesses, I mean, we still technically are. I think we'd be mid sized at this point, but you know, even in the small businesses, you still definitely get the hairballs. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, and yeah, so I mean, the, the demand out there is great. And I would imagine, obviously, that the larger companies would be the ones that would initially have the most problems just because <clears> of the <throat> sheer bloat. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. what inspired you to start your new book? And what is it talking about that's a little different from what you've done before? Right. It was it was literally when we decided to go to the mid market and we started looking at their problems in general and suddenly realized, oh, we haven't 
we haven't even looked at accounting for 20 years. Gotcha. And we certainly haven't looked at it through the semantic lens. And as I started looking at that, all of a sudden I realized what a, this is not a small change. It's not like robotic process engineering of, of whatever was going on. I mean, this is a absolute fundamental change in the way accounting is going to be done in the future. Mm. I'm getting kind of close to the end of my career. So I just decided we're going to, I'm going to write a book and put it all out there and, and let people run with it. Yeah. And that's a good, it's a really good position to come from too. Cause I mean, I'm just thinking to myself, everybody knows that it's kind of just an accepted thing that in business accounting is a mess. I mean, yep. you want to, I, I, you want to hire yep. your accountants to come in and, and do work for you. You, you don't really want to address it. It becomes kind of a bloated thing. I mean, <laughs> I've been dating an accountant for the last year and <laughs> I hear the horror stories that she has and she, she works for the military. Um, you know, it, we, we just accept it kind of, don't mm -hmm. we, that, that accounting is just yep. that one thing that's a mess all the way to movie plot lines of, of lost yep. money and missing decimals and, yeah. And, and the, I mean, it gets, it's even weirder from an owner or a manager standpoint. So the owner or manager, middle of the month is going to the accountant to, and asking, how did I do last month? Yeah. Well, that's, that's like the totally the wrong question. It's too late. It's already last month. It's, it's already 15 days ago. Meanwhile, you're in the middle of the month trying to figure out how is this month going to go? So you have all these flash reports and all this stuff that you hope is going to give you a sneak preview of how this month is going and is going to turn out. But the literal truth is most of what's going to affect this month, depending on what kind of industry you're in, has already occurred. Like in our industry, in professional services, all the contracts that we're going to have sold for this month have already been sold. We're just executing on them. It's just a matter of the staff plan and, and yeah. invoicing and things like that. <clears throat> we one of the tenets of this book is that the the books are already always closed mm. at any moment in time if a business event has occurred that affects your financials it's in your financials within a few seconds and you just look at it and you say that that's already happened and if it hasn't happened yet it's not in the financials but you know you can't you can, you're only speculating on things that haven't <laughs> happened but with accounting you're speculating on things that are, that happened weeks ago. You go, why? Yeah, it, but that, that so often is something that is lost, even on I think C-suite level people. I mean, when I was young, I grew up for uh, I be began work as a retail manager for a while while I was in college and. I, I worked for someone who did not understand that, who always was frightened by the stuff that was on the books from, from years and years in the past. I was managing the store for him. And I told him, it's like, these, this, these losses are gone. <laughs> right. If right. we sell this for 50% now, it's, it's all profit. So I think that a lot of people don't understand that, that you have to be ahead of it to really mm -hmm. be able to stay on top of your books. You've got to be looking right. forward. Right. And, and traditional accounting, is looking backwards. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and you you're at that point, you put yourself in a almost purely reactive stance, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, how do we become proactive? <laughs> what are what are methods using uh, what your offers that you're like semantics? What do how do we get ahead of it? How do we know what's coming instead of right. constantly looking over our shoulder? Yeah. So what, what the book outlines <clears throat> is, and again, depending on your industry, but um, there's only about a dozen fundamental business events that, that change the, finance, the financial situation of a company. Okay. You know, they're placing purchase orders, issuing invoices, receiving payments, manufacturing widgets, <clears throat> but there's only about a dozen of them. And it turns out, you can, and right now, most of those dozen have been implemented in dozens of systems. So the inventory issues are over here and the purchase orders are over there and the invoices are over here. And this stuff's, it's just all over yeah, the place. Yeah. And <laughs> Nobody talks to each other. Yeah. yeah, and eventually finds its way to the general ledger and from there to the warehouse and financial reporting and all that. 
But instead, if you say, look, we're just gonna have a system. First thing we're gonna do is, is capture those events. The second thing we're gonna do, and this, I originally thought this was gonna be hard because I worked for an accounting firm. I built accounting systems and I kind of internalized a lot of this stuff. We always talked about accounting policy. And I thought it was so nebulous and hard. And, you know, every time an accountant picks up a piece of paper, they scratch their head. And what account am I going to charge this to? <clears throat> but as we decompose that, it turns out that accounting policy is incredibly simple. I don't know why we could never see that. It was just obscured <laughs> by procedure and all this crap. So if you've automated, if, if you capture the event, if you automate the policy, which includes how are you going to value this transaction? How are you going to classify it? What's the timing of it? Those things are all automatable. Mm. Convert that to a financial transaction, and it can immediately go to the books. You know, we describe in the in our book, you know how um, how this is going to be organized differently. And I won't go into a lot of detail with that now, but just just imagine mm. the end game. Then is within seconds of an event occurring. It's captured, it hits the policy, becomes a financial transaction, it's in the books. And if you look at your financial statement a few seconds after an event occurs, it'll already be reflected. So what I'm thinking is you're talking about this. I, I This is probably my weakest area. I'm not good at math. <laughs> <laughs> I, would right. never, I would never qualify for an accountant in my experience in accounting and goes only in my personal life. But this sounds like it makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, this, why is this not the way that we have been doing it all the way up into this point? And why are we not scrambling to make these changes? Because I can tell you, I don't see, I mean, at least for the experience I have, people that are scrambling to try and make changes like this. Well, hopefully after the book comes out, people will start scrambling. I know. I mean, exactly. You're opening my eyes. I'm, I can yeah. only imagine what what the results would be for people that are actually in the industry. Yeah, because I I think I think there's no scramble right now. Uh, it's weird to think this, but I don't. I, I've looked at a lot of books and a lot of magazines. I have not seen what I'm talking about. I don't. Think I haven't anybody, either. Yeah, yeah. I don't think anybody's proposed it. So that's why I'm writing a book. Yeah, but I mean, again, why do you think that they might be like that? Is finance too conservative in the United States? Is it just that they are so That's stuck in their it. ways that they don't want to think their way into a new situation? Yeah, and <laughs> and 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 depending on you know the part of the problem at at the most senior levels, there are people whose career depends on it being complicated. Ah. There are people who do earnings management who are pretty close to burning earthworms on shovels to figure out what, what the earnings guidance is going to be. They, they have to have all these reserves and funny accounts and moving stuff around, and it takes them months after the end of the year before they finally put the annual report together, and here you go. Those folks are going to be the last to change. Because, mm -hmm. you know, as Upton Sinclair once said, it's hard to convince somebody of something if their salary depends on their not understanding it. <laughs> These people's salary depends on their not getting this new way. So this is gonna come, I think, from the mid-market. There are gonna be owners and managers who are gonna say, I, I, my career doesn't depend on me screwing around with earnings management. My career depends on running the business better. Yeah. And if I had up-to-date information, I could run my business better. So, you know, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so. Well, see, in, yeah, that, that's a great way to look at it, too. I mean, we understand that in this current world that we're in right now, I mean, things are changing so quickly. Every episode of this podcast, we're talking about new technologies and new things that are fundamentally altering the way that we do business. So from whether it be AI, algorithms, art, uh, chat, it, various other technologies, right. we have to all be prepared if we're in an executive position to know that technology will catch up. And there's always going to be a Dave McComb out there that's going to look at things that's going to figure out how to make that work. So we have to be prepared, don't we, to, to, mm -hmm. to pivot and get with the times or else we've got a buggy whip factory and Ford's building cars. Right. Exactly. Yep. Yep. 
So tell me a little bit about the process of writing the book. I know that that's something that a lot of our audience has some interest in, and you've, you've now done several. Uh, books have worked well for you, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think a lot of our work comes directly or indirectly. If somebody reads the book, they think, yeah, that makes sense. Talk to those guys. <clears throat> and a lot of people read the book and do it themselves, which is also fine. You know, <clears throat> we're really here to change the world and run our business at the same time. Well, line. yeah, and that and that's why and that's why I'm interested in, in exploring that a little bit because it's all about the idea of how communication works. As somebody like me, I don't really understand a lot about accounting for the most part. I mean, I'm a liberal arts guy. I'm a, I'm a publishing mm -hmm. history writing guy, but I can understand it when it breaks it down to something that's in a book. So this is a complex mm -hmm. subject. And right. yeah, it's like you, you mentioned earlier in the interview, it's like, we're not really going to have time to go into this, but that's really kind of the benefit of you being able to put this in this kind of a medium, isn't it? To Right. Give, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in, in this case, part of the process of writing the book, we're actually building out a system that implements this in parallel. So I want to make sure that I'm not just saying things that are theoretical, that, <clears throat> that sound right. good. I want to make sure this can actually be done but I'm not building it to make the exclusive, you know, this is the only way to do it. You know, we're going to describe in the book. If you want to do this, here's how you do it. Well, that's amazing. <laughs> I, I, love, I love that. And it's definitely, I think it, it will uh, definitely be worth a read, even for me, for somebody that's uh, just, just to take a look and get a, uh, an interest of it from the outside. Um, so yeah, I mean, as we continue on here, what advice do you give to somebody who may be a CEO, an entrepreneur who's listening to this and they think, gosh, I may need to actually really take a, a helicopter view of what's going on in my finances. What are their first steps that they need to do that are practical steps that they can do to, to begin to possibly yep. make a change if they need to? Yep. Yep. I mean, the first thing, the, the, the very first section <clears throat> of the book kind of outlines how accounting currently works okay. and why is it flawed. So you should just take that and go back and look at your accounting system. Say, is that how my accounting system works? And is it flawed? And I would suggest, <laughs> yes, it is. But, you know, don't take my word for it. Go go check. Um, so that's the first thing. Maybe take an inventory. <clears throat> how many systems do you have that contribute to your financial reporting? Mm -hmm. you know, we did some work with a medium-sized workers' compensation insurance company, you know, 3,000 people. So not gigantic, but not small. And somewhere along the line, they discovered that they were accidentally uh, creating the equivalent of invoices in 23 different systems. And they'd never noticed, you know, anytime they do, you know, somebody get hurt at work and have a workers' comp claim and they'd overpay them, they have to get the money back, that works like an invoice or if they sold an elevator permit and somebody paid over time. <clears throat> Anyhow, they had 23 different places. And of course, if you have 23 places you're asking people for money, uh, odds are, A, you have a heck of a time figuring out if they already owe you money before mm. you, you know, or you owe them money, sorry. <clears throat> and, you know, they, they just had a heck of a time with, you know, what accountants call uh, revenue recognition. Are you actually treating all three, all 23 systems the same? No, come on. All, <laughs> yeah, they can't. <clears throat> you know, and uh, or for bigger companies, you know, there's this regulation called Sarbanes-Oxley that came out in the, in the wake of the financial crisis, <clears throat> which said uh, executives, CEOs and CFOs have to attest to the accuracy of the numbers on their financial reports or go to jail or have huge fines. And how you attest is they have these giant projects where dozens or hundreds of people interview people and find systems and draw flow charts. They fill war rooms of flow charts to try and figure out where did that number come from? Mm -hmm. And it's as if, and then, and then they say, yeah, it's, it's legit. We know where that number comes from. No. It, it went, it flowed through so many pipes and arrows and, and stuff that, you know, you're kidding yourself if you think you know where that number came from. Whereas, <clears throat> and, and if that bothers you, if you think going to jail because the numbers aren't right would be a bad thing, which it would be. Um, 
consider what we're talking about here, which is a business event happens. We connect it to the policy. We connect it to the financial transactions and it goes on to the books. Bing, 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 bing. In a few seconds, <clears throat> if that number's on the books, we can just, it's four steps. We can trace exactly where it came from. It's not 20 other systems and maybe it came from, maybe it went through Fred's spreadsheet where we allocate all it. No, none of that. It's not necessary. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> and I can't believe that we haven't been able to see that so far. I'm, I'm glad that you're able to actually shed a little bit of a light on it. So, you know, with, with us having only a couple more minutes, uh, let's give us a golden nugget. I like to call it that. Um, something <laughs> that we haven't talked about, something we haven't touched on that I think that our audience, you or you feel that our audience might just need to know, might be something that they can actually take and use and implement right away. Hmm. Well, that's to help them with their systems. <clears throat> um, you know, maybe maybe the golden nugget is just to literally count up how many systems you have that contribute to your financial results. Mm -hmm. The sheer number should bother you. And oh, and, and ask yourself, <clears throat> how long does it take you to close your books? Yeah. If it takes 15 days, 10 or 15, that's what it usually is. What that means is this, the, this, as soon as you get a report, you're looking at information that is anywhere from 15 to 45 days old. It's what happened the previous month. You know, is that is yeah. that useful? No, you want to, I want to know what's happening now and what what have I got between now and the end of the month? That's all that matters. Yeah, because I mean, when they see that, I, th I think that is actually a really good thing because they see that they realize they may realize that there's a problem there that they didn't know they had. Right. Right. Yeah. So there you go, guy. Uh, just just do an audit. Actually, just take a look and yeah, see, what's, essentially. see what's going on <clears throat> in your own system. See, see if you have 10 different programs working all at the same time just to do the same, to give you one number. Right. Um, well, Dave, tell us a little bit about where we can, when we can find your book, and about where our listeners can find you if they need to pursue further. Yeah, the book is going to be later in the year. I thought this last weekend that we had a we had a working title, but we just found out that somebody had already used that title. So, we're gonna, <laughs> so I don't want to <clears throat> I don't want to say what that is because that's probably not what it is. Um, if you want to get a hold of of me or Semantic Arts, I mean, it's pretty simple. It's the word semantics, like, you know, the study of meaning, semantic arts. You just smash those together, .com. You'll find our website. You'll find me pretty easily. I'm not that hard to find. Um, yeah, that's, and we're, uh, you know, we're happy to help with, with it could be accounting or, or anything else. I mean, we, we help with lots of kinds of systems. Wonderful. And, and everybody, the links are going to be down below here, along with a link to Dave's existing books. And when we are releasing, Leaders Press releases his new one, uh, it will be up on for pre-order and we'll let you know. Uh, and Dave, yep. we really appreciate you being one of our authors. Uh, <laughs> I love having one of our own internal authors on. We don't do it all the time, but I think that yep. your book has a great amount of potential to change the way that we do business, even we ourselves uh, at Leaders Press. Yep. Yeah, no, I'm and I'm excited to have found you guys. I think, I think, Without that, we may not have gotten the reach that I think I think you guys can provide. So I'm I'm very excited about that. Yeah, we're excited as well, uh, Dave. It was wonderful having you, and we will probably be speaking very soon in the future, and maybe we'll have you on again. Great, thanks, Andrew. All right, Dave. Take have care. a great one. Right.